Hey guys, we're going to be looking at the last boss room of the Nexus Raid. Now there are so many artifacts that you could encounter from the last boss room itself. And there is a feat opportunity with um, meeting or seeing all of these art of different artifacts. As far as for this raid, we had gotten the artifact Clay of the Gods. And depending on the artifact that you encounter, some of the room mechanics will change and others will remain the same. For our room, the mechanic that changed was the vortexes that you see on the ground right now. Also the white ripples, it just looks like. Um, they do different things depending on the artifact. Some of them buff you and the boss, and sometimes they slowed you down, and other times they provide power. In this go around, we actually got the vortex that provided power, so that was a very great help for our team. And moving on to some of the bosses, there will be one boss that is phased in and two that are phased out. You will have to focus on the bosses that are phased out first before you attempt the one that's phased in, because if you do vice versa, the phased in boss will go down to about half life or even more depending on the damage of your team and will regenerate health. The room mechanic that I mentioned before that remains constant is the inevitability attack where one shield pops up which is on Cordana and that will be meant for the group. The inevitability attack is a huge AoE that will basically wipe your entire party if you are not within the vicinity of the shields. Um, there will be two shields that pop up. One is meant for your group which is going to be usually the first shield and the second will be for the tank. Now. Here's the second shield that's going to pop up on Jason Todd and that will be meant for the tank. Now at the time when the second shield pops up, your teams want to collect near the person with the first shield, in our instance would be Cordana. When the skulls pop up on around the boss that is phased in, that's when you want to be within the shield's range because that's when the AoE blast will go off. Right after the AoE goes off, you want to make some space between your teammates and spread out once again because if an AoE such as the gas that was just there or you know if it was future Lex's orange circle had been where your teammates were, where all of you were, then that would be wiping your raid as well a lot of people will be knocked down and that will be a lot of people that you're trying to recover from so you want to constantly watch out for this this will continually happen throughout the entire last boss room until I believe there is um, the only the phase boss left so when you have the shield, you basically want to call out in your voiceover IP saying, Hey, I got the first shield. If the second person gets the second shield, just say that you got the second shield. In the case where there is a gas or any kind of AOE that's around your party members, you might want to decide which way you are going to roll so that you avoid um, getting knocked down by the AOEs. And another thing to mention about the person who has the second shield, you definitely want to stay behind the bosses as much as you can. I know with all the colors and whichever way the boss is facing, it's hard to see when they'll turn around, but just try to keep as much behind them as possible. And if you can, when the skull comes up, there is a slight tinge of time before the actual wipe or inevitability attack goes off. And at that point, you could actually, before that attack goes off, off, you could kind of lunge in so that you're not standing there waiting for the attack to go off and possibly putting yourself at risk of dying. And for those of you who have the shields, whether you are the first one that has a shield or the second shield holder that goes to the tank, you definitely don't want to roll or block. I don't know about blocking. Blocking might be okay. I'm not really quite sure on that, but I wouldn't take a risk on it if it was me. But um, you can use power, so if you're a healer or a troller, you could continually give power. You could continually, um, you know, debuff and give uh, health back if you're a healer. But you definitely don't want to move because that will make the shield not work. And even though your teammates are standing within the shield limits, they will still be hit by the AoE being wiped. And also in the case like you just saw, our shield went off and it wasn't mis it was kind of mismatched and we lost some of our people. But um, do your best to try to pick them up. If they're within the gas like they were, just try to pick them up as best as you can if you have a shield on you. If you don't, then you might, you know, just kind of have to bite the bullet and continue on rather than continually try to put yourself at risk like I did and die myself. Luckily, I had a teammate who picked me up before, you know, my timer ran out so that I could get back up and continue healing for my team. 
but <laughs> looking at that retrospectively, you know, just watching the video and commenting on it, I kind of wish I had picked someone else up or tried to pick someone else up because I possibly might have cut up and didn't die myself. But yeah, if one of your teammates died, do your best to try to pick them up. Use your shields and call out who you're picking up so that you don't have a collection of people going to one um, downed player, possibly getting hit by an AoE and wiping your party out as well, especially since you're so close to the end. And as you can see, both of our phased out Lexes are downed and now we are working on our phased in. And during this time, it is still possible to get hit by this inevitability attack. So when the shield is up, you definitely want to be around the shield area. And the shield person, since there was only going to be kind of one shield that I always saw for myself, you might want to be standing near the boss just to make sure that um, the tank doesn't die. And in the case where the attack goes off and a lot of your party members are down try to pick up as much as you possibly can and continue on with um, dpsing down the boss so that you could possibly get it down and try your luck before another inevitability attack goes off so after the bosses are all down you just collect the artifact and that will drop the loot and you will get your mark and that is pretty much it for this boss room um, and the artifact, the Clay of the Gods. Once you go ahead and complete this room, you will get a little notch in your feet list for getting this artifact. And that's what you want to continually try to do. I hope this helped you guys understand a little bit more about the shield mechanism. And stay tuned for more guys. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.